Hey guys, hey. welcome to another episode of Coming Up Higher where we want to come alongside you and encourage you to come up higher in everyday life. And we do that through this podcast. But one of the um, amazing ways that we get to experience it is through music. Yes. Um, that's how God started us on this process is through our songwriting and worship. And um, it's just really something that we feel like we were born to do. And um, that's what this podcast is about, is a celebration of a song that the Lord gave us that has just released as our latest single. And it is on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, everywhere you find music. And it is called Chasing Me Down. And we wanted to share the story behind it. And we want the message of that story behind it to encourage you. And so, um, Whitney, you had been on this process with the Lord when the idea of the song came and then you shared it with me Mm -hmm. and I had been walking along the process with you, but when I heard the song that came out of it, um, it was just, wow, this is amazing. And it's a message that needs to be heard. And so why don't you kind of walk our listeners through that process that you had been on with the Lord that gave you the idea for the song chasing me down. Yeah. Um, we've been having such a Holy spirit charge today, so we're going to get probably <laughs> emotional and like already tearing up just because the Lord just showed me something literally as you were talking that I didn't even realize was a part of the story. So I get to share that for the first time ever today, but how this all began is I went back to college. I felt like God, um, after our dad passed away, I finished up my associates that that next semester. And then it was just kind of like, okay, now you're done with school for now. And so, you know, that was the season where we started our music ministry and did missions and like all the, I wrote some books. And uh, so God did a lot of things, but then during a prayer time, we were actually uh, at our brothers when they were living in uh, New Mexico. And I felt him say, all right, I want you to go back to school, but I want it to be for something that can help you better run like the music ministry and your nonprofit mission work and stuff like that. So that's what I did. And so it was an awesome, awesome experience. I love the school I went to. And one of the amazing benefits of going there is a Christian university evangel. And they have uh, chapels, every multiple chapels throughout the week. And so um, actually the idea for the song kind of came during one of those times. Uh, I had a 45 minute commute to school and I was listening to uh, a pastor speak and, and his primary message that anytime you hear him speak, he talks about is the goodness of God. Mm. And just how God is literally like chasing us down with his goodness and his mercy. And it's something that he gets a lot of flack for because not everybody has that revelation of the father, but God is a father who, you know, we love because he first loved us and he's a father that gives good gifts. Like Jesus said, you know, why would, if, if you being a a sinful man or woman, give your child something good, of course I'm paraphrasing here. But if you would give your child something good when they asked for it, like, why wouldn't our father yeah. in heaven? Yeah, the verse where it says, if if your child asks for a piece of bread, would you give him a rock or a snake or yeah. thing? What Jesus was speaking about that. It's like, why do we think that we're better parents or, or better gift givers that that than he is or that right. that he would withhold goodness and mercy from us when right. we, we wouldn't do that? and to our own children. Right. Right. And so I was listening, like, as I was commuting day after day and simultaneously, as I was listening to these, uh, we had a spiritual dad in the faith who was going through a walk with cancer and he was at, he was often had to go to the hospital in Springfield where my college was. So it worked out in that respect because I got to go and visit after school. I'd go up there in the hospital. Uh, Debbie Short is his wife. Um, and so I got to 
to hang out with them and just kind of walk through that journey with them. But they, we've always said they're like second parents mm -hmm. to us. And what was very difficult about the situation and even Alicia has said, you would, when we, when he got to a point, he was very, you know, losing weight and uh, we hooked up to all these different machines. And when you walked in there, I know one day specifically, Alicia was kind of taken aback because it reminded her so much of our dad mm -hmm. and the situation that uh, he was in just years prior. I think it was like five years prior. We had just at the same, very same hospital. Mm -hmm. We had just walked through this journey with our dad. And so we were believing, believing in faith for Chuck's healing, just like we did our dad. But we could tell that it was heading down a very similar road that it, that it did with our dad. And unless God intervened, you know, he was going to be going to heaven. And so that was the, the background. That was the context of me listening to this pastor of, you know, God's goodness and mercy is chasing you down. And, and then going to the hospital after school and then seeing my, my spiritual dad, kind of like my second dad up there uh, in that hospital bed, dying the same death my dad did just a different type of cancer. And, um, so I was in chapel one day at school and just listening, uh, kind of zoning out of the, the message because so much was on my mind. And I told God, I was like, you know, what that, what that pastor has been saying about your goodness and mercy, like, I believe it, but I, it's hard for me to see it right now. And so, um, you know, show me, I want you to show me that your goodness and mercy is chasing me down. And it was like, from that moment, God opened up my eyes to show me how every day, just the little things that happen, just the, the stranger who paid for my Starbucks or, uh, the, the person who called or texted me to ask me how I was doing that day, or, uh, just, you know, the love, my family and the support that they gave me so that I could even, even make the venture to, to do schooling and things like that. Um, you know, those are all, we see them attributed to the person, mm -hmm. but really God is love. Yeah. And so whenever there's a, a loving act, whenever there's kindness or goodness shown, that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't because of the father. Yeah. And, and, and God revealed that to me, but what's really, what, what I was referring to at the beginning of the episode, when I say, God just showed me something about this. So that verse about surely your goodness and mercy um, is found in Psalm 23, six and surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. That's where that verse comes from. Uh, but what I didn't realize is right before that is in verse five, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. And I don't know, Alicia, if you remember, um, during, one of our worship times mm -hmm. up at the hospital with Chuck. Um, that was, it was one of the last ones that we were able to have with him at the hospital. The word that came forth was how he was preparing a table yeah. before Chuck in the presence of his enemies. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that that verse is actually right before surely yeah. your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. But it was such a powerful time. I would I wasn't sure if I was allowed to bring my guitar in the room or not. So I snuck it in <laughs> a couple of times, but the, the hospital ended up being okay with it. But we would just have these worship sessions. And, and the nurses actually would wor worship with us. Yeah. They'd, they'd like, we'd shut the door because we wanted to have privacy and they would crack, they'd come and crack the door open and they would say, the worship is just reverberating down the mm -hmm. halls. We didn't want to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> and and so. they would be excited when we came in, uh, you know, with my guitar because they knew what was coming. But it was such a powerful time and Chuck got to worship with us and just talking about how God was preparing a table. And, you know, later we, we knew it was that, that God was preparing Chuck to go home mm -hmm. and that he was preparing a table for him there. And it was going to be a, a smooth transition. Yeah. And even just seeing at the hospital, um, I know when Debbie's come on here, we've shared a few of the testimonies of how, even despite those circumstances, Chuck and Debbie were praying for people. They were literally ministering. Chuck was ministering out of a hospital bed and just encouraging others and pointing them to God and reconciling with them, them with God. Mm -hmm. And so throughout this whole situation, what I could have taken as, or what we could have taken as, wow, this is the same, this is the same way our dad died. Like 
you know, they're never going to be healed or um, just to kind of take on that grieving identity. Instead, God showed me, no, look at how my goodness and mercy is chasing you down. Mm -hmm. And so that's with this song, I just want it to be a reminder because there's a lot of difficult things going on right now for all of our listeners. And we may be in different boats, but we're all in some type of storm yeah. right now. And just knowing that despite what it looks like with my, with my physical eyes, that, that God is still chasing me down with his goodness and mercy. And I even have it to the point. Cause I was like, I want, I want to see God moving in my everyday life where now I have an alarm that's on my phone that goes off at the same time every night that uh, reminds me to think back on my day and say, think about what, think about the gift that God gave you today. Mm -hmm. Like what was his goodness today? And so I try and reflect at night, like, all right, how did God chase me down? And literally every day I have multiple things that mm -hmm. I could say that, yep, God's goodness and mercy. Yeah. Cause perspective is everything really. Mm -hmm. And there, our brains are almost actually wired to, to automatically see the pitfalls or to see the uh, hindrances or the mm -hmm. obstacles, like, cause that's just how we're wired. How am I going to have to maneuver to get through life with as much ease as possible or to, to avoid using energy and, 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 and things like that. Um, and so really it's, it takes that, um, that focus and in, in, in that drive to say, I'm going to shift my perspective. And because like you said, Whitney, like if you look around, there is always something where it is evident that God is on the move. Yeah. Um, there's always something where it's just like, man, like e even I find myself sometimes driving down the road and I think, wow, I can drive. Like I have a car. I have, I have eyes. I have motor functions in my hands and my feet. Like there's, there's always something that's like, wow, Lord, thank you for, for what you've provided me that I can have the independence to go places like little things like that, that we take mm -hmm. for granted. But, um, even amidst trial, there's, there's a richness and there's, there's a new capacity to be had. There's a new discovery of who we are in Christ and who he is to us to be had even amidst the trials. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I think about walking through that stuff with Chuck or walking through things with our dad or walking through heartaches or anything that, that you go through. Each challenge presents an opportunity to discover a new aspect of who God is. Right. And, and if we can kind of see it, that, oh, this happened and, oh, I, this, this obstacle is in my way. God, show me who you are to me in this situation. Mm -hmm. Show me your goodness and mercy in a new light that I've never seen before. I need a new level of grace for this, for this obstacle mm -hmm. in my life. I, I need a new level of, of your nature to become a parent in my life that I would have not have seen any other way had this not come to the forefront of my mind, come in my path. Right. And so there's really something to be said about that in perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just thought it was interesting. Our uh, sister-in-law, uh, Jeff's wife, Chelsea, she just posted something on Facebook. Uh, I think it was yesterday that I commented on because it was like, it was so good to me, but she was like, you know, sometimes I wish, oh, let me go back to my childhood. But then I remember, wait, but that was my parents' divorce. And then I think, oh, I wish I could go back to when my dad was alive. But then I remember, but then I think like, but then I wouldn't have my husband. And it was just, you know, she was just making the point that sometimes we want to go back to things or we wish things were that the way that we wish things, let me rephrase this. We wish that things currently were the way that they were back then. Mm. But then we realized we wouldn't have all these new things and we wouldn't uh, have the knowledge. We wouldn't have the wisdom that we have. And I just thought that was that, that perspective was so powerful because I know sometimes I'm like, man, I wish it was like this or like it was back then, or I wish I had this person again, but it's like, but yet God has done so much through the difficult times. God has done as, as time has passed, as I've submitted myself, as we've submitted ourselves to him and just tried to be obedient, God has, has birthed and grown so much out of those things. Yeah. And so we can't, 
the mountaintops are awesome and the good times are incredible, but we have, we have to remember that so much growth and so much life can come out of the valleys yeah, and the difficult times. And that's how we, we get the foundation to be able to uh, maintain, maintain the good things that God has coming for us to maintain that next level of authority that he has for us. Or uh, maybe there's a promotion at your work that, that you'll now have the foundation to be able to withhold that, or you you're having a family, but now you have the the foundation to be able to steward your family. Yeah. And so I just want to, that the surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life that comes out of Psalm 23. Mm. And so I just want to read that, um, just that whole chapter because it's only the, the six verses. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He lies me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. Psalm is such, it's a popular one that you hear oftentimes and people speak it at funerals or, or different instances in life where they need that peace and that comfort. And what I love about Psalms 23 is that it's proclaiming and it proclaims like, yeah. surely your goodness and mercy will follow mm-hmm. me and I will, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm-hmm. And um, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You yeah. know, it's just you make me lie in green pastures beside still waters. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's, it's obviously a Psalm it's worshipful and it's, yeah. it's that proclamation. And I remember when it was during this season that we're talking about, and we were actually on our way to um, a church service and um, you played a, the voice memo of, of the course, I believe of, of oh, yeah. chasing me down and and then we began to write verses in the car like during that we because it was just like just inspiration was flowing and and um but one of the parts that i really like about the song is is the question so why would i just keep on running when what i've been searching for what i've needed has has been there all the time because it's been chasing me down And so that's what I would like to encourage our listeners. I'd like to encourage you guys is why would you keep on running in search of something that's been there all the time? Surely his goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life. And Mm -hmm. so, so often we look for that in relationships or we look for it in our identity and what we pour ourselves into or what we're known for our gifts and our talents or our jobs or our family, being a mother, being a father. But instead of chasing those things, I believe the Lord is asking us in this hour to sit still and, and just be identified as his Mm -hmm. and allow that goodness to speak over you, to reign over you, allow that mercy to heal you, allow that mercy to, um, identify things in your life that need to be changed and that you need to ask forgiveness for and, and habits and thought patterns and sins and, and things that, that need to not go into the next season, but his mercy's reigning over it. Mm-hmm. And, and um, he delights in showing mercy. I love that verse uh, and mercy triumphs over judgment. And so instead of looking for that identity and looking for healing and looking for all of this and chasing after this dream and chasing after this relationship, sit still and and allow yourself to be caught because he's chasing after you. And so we just want to encourage you guys. We hope this song, um, we didn't realize when we were finished writing it and recorded it, we actually recorded it at the beginning of the pandemic. We were in Atlanta when they were starting to run out of toilet paper and shut states down. Yes. And um, we kind of cut our trip short even because we had no idea what was going on. Um, 
But we didn't leave without recording this song yes. with Mr. <laughs> Sean Hill, our uh, producer. And so we just wanted to give you the backstory that um, this is a song of hope. And we need hope in this hour. And the Lord knew when Whitney was writing it in a, in a tough season that people would need it right now as they're walking through their tough season. And so yeah. uh, we encourage you guys to listen to it and just be encouraged. But we just wanted to share the, a little backstory behind it um, and just show you how God can take situations and the emotions you're feeling and the hardships you're walking through or whatever, or even the good things and the joyous things. He wants to take those things and use it to spread his glory on the earth and yeah. spread his message on the earth. And so um, that's what chasing me down is all about. <laughs> yeah. And I would just encourage you all, even as Alicia was talking about Psalm 23, it is something that we hear read a lot at funerals, but I feel like God is wanting to revive it for us so that it's not about the dead, but it's about the living. Yeah, so true. And I know it may not be like that for other places, but I know in the United States, like this is one that's popular uh, and something you're, you're used to hearing at funerals. But actually, this is for us, like mm -hmm. right now. You know, he's, he's causing us to lie down in, in green pastures beside quiet waters, refreshing our soul. He's guiding us on the right paths. Um, even though we were walking through darkest valleys, we're not going to fear evil because he's with us. Yeah. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. He's preparing a table in the presence of our enemies and he's anointing our head with oil. So our cups overflow and his goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we're going to dwell in his house forever. Yes, like amen. that's for us. That's for us. And so this week, I just encourage you, even as you listen to our song, dive into Psalm 23 and just ask God, God, what do you have in this for me? Because I feel like he's going to make this chapter in Psalms just fresh and alive for all of us today. Yes. So thank you guys for listening. Once again, you can stream or download Chasing Me Down anywhere where music is sold and streamed. And we just so appreciate the love and support we've had already yeah. from it. And it's going out to national radio. So we're just be praying that uh, it hits the airwaves, be, not because we want to be famous, but because it's a word that literally needs to get out there. Yes. And like Alicia said, we need encouragement now more than ever. And we need this reminder that his goodness and mercy is still chasing us down, even amidst yes. the, the, the valley of the shadow of death. It is chasing you down. And we appreciate you guys coming up higher with us and come up higher in your worship today. Come up higher in your thoughts and your percep perceptions. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.